Thanks for tuning in to the Yakety Yak Podcast. This is Tamara Tran. Today I get to interview one of my heroes. Her name is Shelly Francis. She's a dear friend. Shelly is a successful businesswoman. She is a realtor with Caldwell Banker at Station Park in Farmington. I want to give her a shout out. If anyone needs help with the house, she's excellent. I would completely call her and trust her to take care of my real estate needs. That's your little plug. Shelly is ambitious. She's smart. She's sassy. She and Jory had four children. She's going to tell you about her ex-husband, who was a wonderful man. He endured physical abuse, emotional abuse, abandonment. He became a business entrepreneur. He served his city and he committed suicide. She's going to share with us his story. You know, the truth of the truth of it all is life is hard. Yeah. And really life sucks. <laughs> and yeah, it does. It, life is really mostly hard. Yeah. There's super, super amazing, awesome moments. And they're so far and few between. I know. And Shelly, you've had more than your share. <laughs> but, but you know what? Every day there's a super awesome moment. Every single day there is. Like Charlie this morning came in and I was so tired because I'd been up with Spence for the last two nights with him puking. And Ugh. Spencer puking isn't a normal puke. It's... It's... Um, <laughs> <sighs> it's dramatic. I just, my stomach is so bad. I feel like the bread is sitting there. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. And you're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just, and then he's weeping and you're just like, oh my gosh. Oh, Shelly, just, so like I'm half asleep and I'm like, just throw up already. <laughs> right, right. Please, for the love of all, let's get throw up. <laughs> just gag yourself just, and get over it. I honestly went at one point, I'm like, just stick your finger to it. Here's a toothbrush. Just stick it down your throat as far as you can. <laughs> Seriously. So I'm just exhausted. And Charlie comes in. And my first thought was, oh, shit. <laughs> that <laughs> poor kid. Snuggles right up against oh. me. And he's just warm with his yeah. stinky breath. Yeah, and, and his baby Yeah, yeah and he's like, oh, I love you, Mom. You're my favorite mom. Oh, Shelly. <laughs> can we watch SpongeBob? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I just, it was so That's nice cute. for him to just, Yeah. he just wanted to be by he me. He just wanted to love you. Yeah. And I loved it. I and love if that, that's my happy moment for the day, and then, I'm going to take it because one day that kid is going to be yeah. 30 mm-hmm. and mad that I said no to loaning him $500. Do you know true, what I mean? True, like, <laughs> true. So I'm going to take that moment today and <laughs> he'll be on the couch. I'll take it. Therapist. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, later I'm going to have to write a $3,000 check to University <laughs> right. of Utah right. Hospital exactly. for right. Spencer's. <laughs> so, but I want, I think that my kids, you know, you, you grow up thinking that you find this one man who's going to marry you. Yeah. And it's happily ever after. And the truth is, no, it's not. Marriage is really hard. It's hard ever after, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I, you know. I don't, I want my kids to know that. And I'm sad that I led them to believe that if they just said a prayer, it's immediately answered and it's answered in the way that they want and it's good and glorious and everything's okay because that was my false teaching. No. But it was, I I would teach them that. Oh, well, let's let's kneel down and pray and we're going to find your hat. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's good to true. have faith it's, and it's good it's to teach true. them things like it's, it's good true. to pray. But I've had those discussions with But you know kids. what? It doesn't always happen. And it and doesn't always happen fast or yeah. even And at disappointment all until is a time. good thing. It's a good thing to have. We need to, because then yeah. when those happy not moments. when these happy moments of your sinky breath kid yeah. climbing into bed, you see those for what they are. That's instead true. of always wanting a big beautiful wedding that's perfect and true. Then the next day you're like holy crap, I have six kids now and I don't get a big honeymoon because <laughs> because real life is like real life. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Shelly, <laughs> do you want to talk about Jory? Sure. Okay. Just so my five subscribers can understand. <laughs> Hello, five subscribers. Can understand. I think I'm one of those. <laughs> I think you are, so maybe I have six. I thought I was, a, I was like two subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think Ryan subscribes. My friend Jen subscribes. And you 
I, that's, and my, my sister, goal is to get more subscribers. And my sister. I'm awesome. going to pass it along and be like, subscribe. And my goal you. is to have you be my co-host podcaster yes. person. Because that'll be really fun. That'll be fun. Okay. Sorry, Tori. You're going down. Yeah, Tori. <laughs> you got kicked off the island. Sorry. No, didn't, Tori. No, she actually did. <laughs> she did. She did because she wasn't available when I was available. And I wasn't available when she was available. And she's long distance. And when we record mm. long distance, it doesn't sound as good because we don't have all the fancy audio equipment. Uh, so face-to-face is just a better right. recording. Well, Sorry, when Tori, Tori comes to visit, Tori. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. She can be. Well, okay. You want to talk about Jory? Yeah. All right, where do we start there? So, why don't let's we'll start. So Jory was born in Rock Springs. <laughs> Jory was my first husband, <laughs> and he was awesome. He was yeah. a really good man. We were married for seventeen years. Um, he was actually so when I met Jory. <clears throat> well, Jory was really uh, horribly abused growing up. Um, his mom and dad divorced when he was two. And uh, she got remarried, remarried when he was five or seven. I can't remember. I want to say five. Um, and that's when the abuse started. Um, With that stepdad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it just, in you know, instead of his mom stopping it, um, she just became complacent and allowed it. And then for, for the first little while, she, they would send him away. And, you know, his aunts and uncles would take him in. They'd kind of pass him around to different families and keep him in, in the house for a few months. Each of them would just keep him for a while. Um, and then he had two siblings uh, that joined their family and it just, by then the, his mom was just as mean and it's so sad. Shelley. Yeah. Oh. It's sad. It's some of the stories he told me were just, just kind of, I mean, that's just awful. It's oh. awful that people all, I, I can't, I mean, there's times where I tell my kids I want to beat them. <laughs> right, but you don't actually do it. Well, I might, no. I, you know, there's, I've spanked my kids, and I. there was one time I got some out of my kids. I threw a box of chicken and biscuits at them. <laughs> because I was so mad. I was just done. It could have been a brick it, or a knife. <laughs> I mean, hey. It was a box of chicken and biscuits. Yeah, it was, they survived. But, you know, I, I get that level of you're so frustrated, and you're tired, and you're just mm-hmm. done. But but to take a, a little kid's head and shove it into a bowl of cereal and hold it because yeah. he slurped his milk. Yeah. I don't get that. No. To lock a kid in the trunk of a car, to lock a kid in his closet, yeah. to, you know, to kick them mm-hmm. when they're trying to take the the heavy black bag of of grass clippings out to the garbage can. And, and to, yeah. You know, there's, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand that. And anyway, from there, it just got worse. He ended up, um, they tried to, they tried to have him put into some mental institutions. You're kidding. Mm -mm. Because he would act out or. Mm -mm. Yeah. They just, they wanted to be, they wanted to be, um, vindicated and see, see, he deserves this. This is, he's earned it. He's bad. He's actually a bad kid. To justify that he was, there's something wrong with him. Yeah, why we do this. that's horrible. Yeah. So what's interesting is he was in one for like two days and they called him up and they said, you know, we actually want to talk to you about what's going on because he's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. There's nothing wrong. This is, this is actually, this actually starts with you. And so they checked him out of there and shipped him off to um, his real dad down in Battle Mountain, Nevada. Oh, (laughs) Um, and his real dad, he's a sweet guy. He's a mess, schizophrenic. and Oh, really? So there was some mental... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know if that is... I mean, from what I understood, he was in a big bar fight one night, and the schizophrenia came from that fight. But I don't know. I don't know. Jory didn't have schizophrenia. He didn't ever have that kind of problems. Jory had severe depression. I see. And... um. Anyway, so when he was 16, Jory went to his his dad and his mom 
and ask them to sign papers to have him become emancipated. And that basically means that your parents divorce you and they sign away rights and you become your own guardian. And they were okay with that. They were probably happy. Yeah, I think they probably were relieved a bit. Yeah, here, go be your own person, which, I mean, if you think about that, my son's 16. And it's crazy because this is me being an awesome mom. Yesterday, he just made the high school soccer team guard. Oh, he did? Yay. He's a cute. And he had to get a physical. And so we were, yesterday was his first game, and I we had to get that physical or he couldn't play. So I'm like, okay, here's the forms. I fill it out. Go to the doctor, get your physical. <laughs> right, yeah. And I wasn't, he got there and he called me. He's like, mom, you have to be here. And I didn't even think about it. But in my mind, I was like, well, duh, he, he's a minor. He has yeah, to have a parent but he, but there. But he's so responsible. I mean, I can see why you think yeah. he could just handle it. But I was driving over there. And I'm like, how did Jory ever go to the doctor? Like, yeah. you have to have a parent to and be money. there. And money. And, yeah. and health insurance. I mean, yeah. you don't. This kind of physical, you just go. But Yeah, but still. So they signed away all rights. So he's 16. He's in high school. He's a junior in high school. Has his own apartment. Is working full time and trying to go to school. Can't believe he did all of that. I can't. Either. He used to go beg for food that he lived across the street yeah he lived across the street from a gas station and they would save up the food from the day the day and they would keep it for him and so he would go over and get the leftover food and Shelly that breaks my heart I remember hearing Jory tell us that story when you guys first moved in yeah it's it's incredible it is and his friends would come over and party and he'd sleep while they were hanging out in his apartment because he was exhausted yeah and he actually he ended up um, dropping out of high school, getting his GD because he had to work. He couldn't work full time and go to school. It was too much. Um, so he got his GED and uh, he ended up going back to Denver, which is where his stepdad and mom lived. And he was working there. And his bishop was a great guy, really helped Jory a lot. And he came to him and said he wanted him to go serve a mission for the the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And Jory was like, no. <laughs> I don't. He was just like, I'm, I'm not. I don't have the money. Yeah. And the bishop was like, um, you have Kevin and Becky. And he was like, they'll never pay for it. And now who are Kevin and Becky? That's his mom and stepdad. Oh, okay. And the bishop at that time said, I'll pay for it. So Jory went and he read the Book of Mormon, which is a book from that church. And... He read it in one night, and he went to the bishop the next day and said, all right, You're kidding. I'll serve. Mm-mm. So he started to work on his papers. And you know, in high school, Jory did That's things. Incredible. He he was drinking and doing things and smoking pot. Yes. And <laughs> I mean, he had no supervision. Yeah, he didn't. And he was, I'm, he was a teenager. Right. <laughs> I mean, what teenager wouldn't try things if they had absolutely yeah. no supervision? Well, and suffering from... Depression and your parents yeah. don't want you. Yeah. I mean, think and about what that means. I, was shot. I feel like I've lost both of my parents. And I really, truly, truly believe that in this world, and I happen to be blessed with the greatest parents on earth. Yeah. I mean, you, it would be, your you could never. It was totally different, wasn't it? It was totally different. And, you know, my mom was amazing. And I do not believe that there is another person that has ever been born or will ever, that can love me. Well, she will, there will never be somebody that loved me like my mom. And so when I hear these stories about Jory's mom, I just am floored by it because I look at my kids and I think, yeah, I could never, I could never sign that paper saying you are not mine. Yeah. And you can never abuse them the way that no. he was abused and neglected. No. No. The neglect was probably equally bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could never know that my child is out in the world trying to make it. Like, he was homeless, living in a car. He lived in a car. Yeah, I can't even imagine. It would kill me. I I hate, I hate when my son didn't make the soccer team last year. I was devastated for him, you know, watching my kids bury their dad. Yeah. It's just, I, so I look at this woman and I think of Jory's story and I just, I, ugh. as a mom, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand it, but. I don't know. So anyways, Jory ended up going on this mission and the bishop paid for it. Um, 
I believe Kevin and Becky, the mom and stepdad, paid for, like, his suit and stuff. Did they? But he was on his mission, and at one point, the mission, he went, he went to Guatemala, um, and at one point, the mission president came to him and was like, listen, Elder, the rule is you write home, and you're not sending letters. Oh, oh, and, Shelley, that's so sad. Well, Jory was like, I have these letters, but my parents won't send me stamps. Oh, my gosh. They wouldn't send him stamps. I can't. I can't. So, I can't believe that. I mean, they were so crazy, but they were the first ones at his farewell to stand up. Our son is so Took great. Took all the credit for oh, yeah. his wonderful yeah. life choices. Yeah, they were. Mm-hmm. Oh, my So gosh. when I met Jory, they, uh, we ended up meeting. I met Kevin and Becky, and I did not like them. He had, And Jory, when I first met him, he did he not tell, tell me anything. anything. He didn't. It was funny because we went over to Colorado where they live. And I, his mom took me out. <laughs> to bond with you? Or? Yes, to go shopping. Like, I went over and met him, and we were going shopping, and she was talking to me, and she's like, now listen, I want you to really think about this, because Jory is so unmotivated, and he will never take care of you. Oh, you're kidding. Mm-mm. He is. He's such a good he's man. He's just not, he's not really what you want. He's, he can't, he doesn't, you know, this doctor I work with offered him a job and he wouldn't take it. This business he's trying to start is just silly. And he's just, he'll never take care of you. And I remember sitting there thinking, Uh, how can you describe him as unmotivated? The fact that he's trying to start his own business is really like awesome to me. That's, that's really motivated. Yeah. Anyways, I went home and I told her, I'm like, Hey, let's go for a drive. (laughs) Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, I hate your mom. (laughs) How can I marry you? Cause I hate your mom. But I told him on the drive, I'm like, your mom said this to me, and I I don't really know what to think about that. And so on this drive is when he told me everything. That it happened to him as a child? So yeah. So you didn't I mean, know not any all, of the history? Not all the details right, and stuff. But, but you didn't know no. that it wasn't a normal No, and mm-hmm. I, we drove home that night. I bet you were so mad. I was, I wasn't. I was so sad. Oh, uh. And I told my parents, and they, my parents were mad because my mom and dad loved Jory. They just thought he was, and yeah. because he was, he was so, so much fun, good. Such a I mean, he just, he had such a gold soul. He was such a good, good person. So, yeah. Anyway, as it went, we got married. Um, that's a whole other fun story. <laughs> <laughs> but his mom has hated me from day one. Mm-hmm. And we went to them and just told them, look, before we have kids, this relationship has to be fixed. And that means counseling. Good for you, Shelly. <clears throat> yeah. And they just told us no, that there's, we didn't, they didn't know what we were talking about. Um, and so we didn't, we didn't ever, we never, we talked to him once. They sent us a baby gift when Gardner was born, and we sent it back. We didn't even open it. Oh, I um, Because they didn't... We we drew... We made boundaries, which was really healthy and good. Yeah, and you were both on the same page. You and Jory yeah. agreed with the boundaries, mm-hmm. which is... Yeah, but they never... Good. So when Jory died, his mom called me that, that night, and... She just told me, she's like, you are a monster. He's dead because of you. Oh, Shelly. You ruined our family. Oh, my and... gosh. <laughs> How did you deal with that? Um, the night that he the night that he died. Yeah. She did that to you. Yeah. I just told her, I'm like, he is dead because of you. He's tried his whole life to impress you. Oh, no. And he was so broken. So sad. And I just said, if you have any class... Do not come to his funeral. You are not welcome there. Good for you. Which, I don't know. I mean, maybe that was wrong of me. No. But No, are you kidding? No. She just... She's just a horrible person. That's awful. So, Jory, I mean, we were married for the first really a lot of good years. I, I take a lot of... It makes my heart happy to know that I did give Jory the best years of his life. You did. I know that he was really, really happy when we were married. And that... Um... Shelly, he was. I remember when you guys first bought your house <laughs> and lived on our street. It was so much fun. You were just the cutest, happiest, Nerdiest. jolliest, <laughs> just couple. You yeah. guys were so in love and so excited. You were just starting your business. Mm-hmm. And it was starting to grow. And Joey, I mean, Jory came from nothing. Yeah. 
And you brought light and happiness to him and stability to his life and wholeness. Yeah. He, you guys he didn't even own a pillow when we met. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm dead serious. He didn't own a pillow. Is that crazy? <laughs> the poor guy. I just remember hearing his story thinking to myself, if this guy can have courage to get up every day and to... Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think that he actually family. did have that much courage. And then in the end, he, he just lost it be, all. Yeah. I think it, it just got to be too much. It did. It, you know, he just... He just, the problem is he was so broken. And Mm -hmm. I believe that, I really do believe that his entire life he was searching for his mom's. He wanted her approval so bad. Yeah. And I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish that he would have gotten counseling. Did he ever? mm -mm. He tried a couple times. But just. But it just didn't. He wouldn't tell with it. Yeah. Just too painful for him. Those are some pretty dark demons. And I think that he was taught at such a young age that he wasn't worth it. That he was worthless. That he was nothing. That, you know. And as parents, we have so much power. We have so much power over our kids. Oh, we do. That we put inside of them what what level of worth they are. And And it's... It's so hard to overcome what you've internalized yeah. and been told that you, you believe yes, about yourself. Yes, you it's have so felt hard. that, yeah. Yeah, it's so hard. I mean, every it's a, just a constant battle. So I think everybody right. has felt it. Even at a different, you know, even as an adult, mm-hmm. you can really, if you go through a divorce. Oh, I can't even imagine <clears> how hard that would you be. You can believe things about yourself that, you know, I know that Jory loved me. I know he loved me. Oh, he absolutely But did. at the end, he was so, so mean. mean to me. I mean... Tell me, he was so mean to me and he said things and he wrote things and he, and there are things yeah. that you've, so, you've showed me some of the messages that were just right after, awful, were just horrible, awful. just lashing out. And yeah. he just, that even as you read him, you're like, so there's much. no way that, and I knew it. this, like, I would say, this is not my jewelry. The yeah. jewelry could never, but he did say him. And there's still days where I'm like, I, what a dick. Like, <laughs> I can still say to myself, that's not Jory, but it, but it was, and he said it to me. It was a side. Yeah. He only showed you probably. Yeah. Cause he trusted you and he was safe with you. Yeah. And you really do hurt the ones you love the most. Those are the ones because you, they are a safety person. As you go back and think about your marriage and kind of what contributed to him getting to the point where he got, was there... I mean, you you can see a pattern, mm-hmm. obviously, now that you look back. But was there something, a, a, a situation, a relationship, a friendship? A, what was it? Do you think that just kind of turned that? I really think it started with. Him. Um, I think that one of the biggest things that happened was politics. I think that um, you know there was the because he was on city council, and I think that there was that big land issue which brought okay. in the mul- the multifamily housing and the neighborhood Bussami. that we lived in who had rallied around him so much. We want Joria City Council. They were so cool and so awesome. And then this land issue came up that was a, it had a, a mixed use. Mm-hmm. And it was it was single family homes, big ones, small ones, and then it was mixed it was multifamily homes. Yeah. And this supportive community suddenly turned on him. And it wasn't just um a little bit. It was so bad. Was it really? It was so bad and so mean. I mean, they were so mean. We had letters. We had people wouldn't talk to him at church. I mean, and the letters and the emails and just the the texts, the phone calls. It, and I I really think that it sent him back to you're worthless. Mm -hmm. It sent him right back to that moment in his childhood when nobody wanted him anymore. He tried so hard to please everybody. He did. To to do what he felt people wanted from him. Mm -hmm. And he was failing. And it was almost like there was nothing he could do. Like literally people would say, we hate you. We will ruin you. You, you know, just these, you've ruined our neighborhood. Oh, that's awful. It was. And I, I think that that is where it started. And, um, and then it just went downhill. 
That's really interesting, actually, <clears throat> because he became so successful in his career, and you guys built your great business together. Mm -hmm. And so he was feeling good. He was meeting new people, realizing how much influence he had and how much he had to offer. Yeah. And then goes and serves the city with and the he, support of everybody. He was the darling of the political oh, community. Oh, I bet. I bet they like, loved him. People looked at him and thought, he's the next one. He's the next I mean, I had people tell me that all the time. He is a rising star. Yeah. And then it just... I, yeah, and I wish awful. I wish people could understand the power of your words. Mm, you know, true. we would read newspaper articles, and the comments were just... Oh, just so mean. My little boy would come home from school, and sister so-and-so said that you want whores and drug dealers to oh, live in our neighborhood. Are you serious? Oh. Oh, that's awful. That's crazy stuff that you're like, <laughs> I mean, mm. I don't think people understand Yeah, that some people could take that. And some just can't. And some people just can't. And they didn't know. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that they un they knew what this would do. Yeah. But it kind of doesn't matter. I was going to say, <clears throat> even if some people can, it's still not nice. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it doesn't give you the right to become... To become mean and vicious and... And just an asshole. Like, yeah. you don't need to do that. And I think that's where... When I say I, I don't like people... That's what you mean, those types of people. I just... Some people want to go, and every day they're so... Like, I remember one of these particular people came to his funeral. And she happened to be one of the most vile letter writers. And I was so mad that she was there. Yeah. I, I couldn't even believe she had the audacity to come. To show up. Because of the things she had said. And I just wanted to, I wanted to look at her and say, get out of here. Did she say anything to you? Oh, Did she, yeah. she hugged or... me and, oh, oh, and acted I'm like so we were best friends. Sent my daughter a letter because she was in the Young Women's. Oh, and I just kidding. was like, oh, Shelly, that's hard. How dare you? I think people don't realize that. I think in the heat of the moment, they say things and don't realize it carries over into someone's personal life. It does. Life. You, We're still the same person. Yeah. And you internalize people's words. Yeah. It's One true. thing I tell my kids is, you know, you can't ever take it back. You it's can so say, true. you're so stupid. You're such a fat, ugly hoe. Yeah. And you may not mean it in that moment. Like, you may just be wanting to make them feel bad. Mm -hmm. But they You succeeded. Mm-hmm. For, and they'll never forget it. Yeah. Because for you say that over and over in your head forever. I still remember what Brian Beck said to me from fourth grade. <laughs> I remember. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. I had a nemes nemesis as yeah. well. And I remember the mean things he said to me. Yeah. You don't forget it. And it's even true. though Brian Beck probably doesn't remember what he said to me. Yeah. I do. But you do. And because you it the way really hurt feel. my feelings. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have to be very careful with your words it's true and that's the other thing i tell him is don't be a liar don't be a liar true because people remember that and you're it's not going to remember your lie it's true so when you tell somebody oh you know what i can't make it tonight because <laughs> i'm going to see wicked and blah 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 and then they ask you in three weeks how wicked was and you didn't really go and you don't know right, right. i mean <laughs> I, I know so just say no <laughs> And then stop. Yeah. Close your lips. I can't go. Because that's so hard for me. I always feel like I need to give someone a huge explanation. <laughs> and then my sister said, Tammy, they don't care. I... Just say no. They don't it need doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> we, we all tell little white lies. I mean, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I'm but you're like, right. Your reputation follows. What's your words, the point? Your words matter. Yeah.